Just because a muscle is located on the back doesn't mean it has anything to do with the spine. The latissimus dorsi actually moves the arm, and the trapezius moves the scapula. This brings us to an important distinction. There are really two shoulders. One is the scapula's movement on the rib cage, and the other is the movement of the humerus in the glenoid fossa called the glenohumeral joint. When you're looking at muscles, think about if they are moving just the scapula, just the glenohumeral joint, or both. This will give you some clue as to the actions. About muscle actions, muscles can only contract. They will always try to bring their two attachments towards each other. The attachment that is more stable and less likely to move is called the origin, and the side that is more movable is often called the insertion. All muscles just try to bring their two attachments closer together. This means that mostly the muscles on the back of the body pull the structures towards the back. Muscles on the front of the body pull the body parts towards the front. In terms of the scapula, the muscles above it tend to pull it upward. This would be the levator scapula and the upper fibers of the trapezius. The fibers next to the scapula tend to pull it or retract it towards the spine. This would be the middle fibers of the trapezius and the rhomboids. Muscles that pull the scapula down, remember the latissimus dorsi? It doesn't connect directly to the scapula, but since it connects to the arm, and the arm is connected to the scapula, and this big muscle attaches way down on the spine, it too will bring the scapula down. The lower fibers of the trapezius also bring the scapula down. Another muscle that brings the scapula down is the pectoralis minor, which is located on the front. The pectoralis minor attaches from the coracoid process on the scapula down to the ribs. The muscles that move the scapula to the front are muscles that have origins that are located more towards the front. One of these is the serratus anterior muscle. Another muscle that moves the scapula anteriorly is the pectoralis major. And like the latissimus dorsi, this muscle doesn't connect directly to the scapula, but to the humerus. Also, the lower fibers of the pectoralis major help to bring the whole arm down, or inferior. Now let's look at that other shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint, and see how the rotator cuff muscles also follow this principle of fiber direction and attachment site. On the front, or anterior side of the scapula, is the subscapularis. Its name also tells you that viewed from behind, this muscle is under the scapula, or sub, or below the scapula. Since it inserts on the front of the humerus, it will internally rotate the arm. But because the origin is actually on the scapula, it doesn't move the scapula at all. On top of the scapula is the supraspinatus, and its name tells you that it's superior or above the spine of the scapula. Since this muscle is on top of the scapula, yes, you guessed it, it pulls the arm up or abducts the arm. Abduction means to take away, and in this case it means the arm is being taken away from the torso. The next rotator cuff muscle is the infraspinatus. Since it's on the back of the scapula, or inferior to the spine of the scapula, hence its name, infraspinatus, this muscle pulls the humerus in a way that externally rotates the humerus. The infraspinatus has a little helper called the teres minor that performs the same action. Muscles that do the same action are called agonists, as opposed to antagonists, which perform an opposite motion. These four muscles are called the rotator cuff muscles because they strongly support the head of the humerus in the glenoid fossa. The acronym for these muscles is SITS, S-I-T-S. There are many other muscles in the shoulder and arm, but this short video should get you started understanding some key muscle concepts.